of course. Oh. So I've done like zero filming today. It's been a slow day checking traps. I was back home for a few days. I'm just back out here for the day doing a run of all the traps and uh, so far everything's been empty no fresh lynx sign or fresh wolf sign and I just finishing up checking traps I'm just gonna go hang out at the bait loop and try to get some more traps set look at this Oh my goodness. Wow. That's a nice looking wolf, guys. First wolf of the season. Wow. Looks like it's got a pretty decent coat. Nice looking fur. Gotta be careful lifting him up. Cause I don't I don't want to rip his fur out if he's frozen to the ice. There we go. Well, isn't that just so awesome? So this is a young female, looks like. Nice, healthy looking dog, though. Real nice fur. I don't see any signs of mange or mites or anything. No rubbing. Just a beautiful coat. I know some people will be wondering about the blood. When we found her, there's a lot of blood around. What happens a lot of times is these wolves, when they get caught, they reach to the side and they start trying to chew at the snare around their neck. In this case we use this power ram. So we got this piece of frozen steel here and when her mouth touches that the skin gets ripped off. Like You know when you stick your tongue to a frozen pole and then your tongue stuck to it. And when you rip it off you rip some skin off and your tongue starts to bleed a lot. It's the same thing that happens here. It has nothing to do with the snare causing any damage to the animal. It's not cutting into its neck or anything like that. It's just because her mouth touched some cold steel and got some skin ripped off of her gums and stuff. So it like it looks like a really good catch. This is exactly what you want to see. This snare is right around her neck, right up, right behind her ears. A really, really good catch. Like you have to understand, these wolves are powerful animals. If she was alive for very long, this whole place would have been torn up. She would have been trying to get away. <clears throat> looks like she came over the log where our ram set was and she got to the other side she probably tried to bite at this ram a few times but this ram what it does is when the animal goes through the snare this ram's usually compressed and when they go through the snare it fires open and it just pulls that snare super tight these snares they don't work by crushing the animal's neck or strangling it to death the the whole purpose of it, or the way it works, is that you want to compress the carotid arteries in the neck, which is why we try to get that snare right up behind the ears, because that's where the carotid arteries are most exposed. So she went through our snare and this ram fired. She probably spent a few seconds chewing at it, you know, just an instinct, and then she lost consciousness because that snare cut off the blood flow to the brain, and then at that point she's unconscious, and then from there she just dies, so it's a... Uh, in my opinion, it's not cruel at all. I feel, I feel like it's a very ethical way to harvest animals. And I know that there's people that disagree with that, but it's a, it's a quick way to go for the animal, especially when you get a real good catch like that. It's definitely a quicker death for them than freezing to death or dying of a disease or getting ripped apart by another animal. So, first wolf of the season. Woo! 
Wow. Nice looking dog too. Good healthy looking animal, that's what you want to see. There we go, shell loaded up. When I was back at home, I grabbed myself a harness for my sled, make it a little easier to tow. Didn't see any other wolf tracks around. I think she was just lone wolf in it. Looking for a mate, probably, or a pack to join. All right, let's go check out the coyote bait and see what we can do there. Well, we made it to the bait loop. We got a few fresh sets of coyote tracks going in on the back side here, so we're gonna get a few more snares set up. We got a few more squirrels on our way out, so a little bit more fur for the day, but uh, mainly it's just the big ticket item, the wolf that we got. So awesome. So, yeah, I'm just gonna get busy here, setting a few more snares before we run out of light. Then I'm gonna be heading back home. I gotta get busy doing some skinning. Still got lynx I gotta skin, I got that beaver from way back early this fall I gotta skin. And now a wolf as well, so I'm uh, trying to keep up with it best I can. So we're gonna get back home, do some skinning, and then a few more days we'll be back out and get to checking traps. Coming down the trail here, I got this spruce tree. There's a squirrel tail poking out of here. Half a squirrel, eaten, and half buried, I guess. Interesting. Well, that was quite the job. Uh, it took me a full two days to get that wolf fully skinned out. 
That was my first time skinning a wolf for taxidermy. I've done smaller animals like lynx and fisher before, but that was the largest animal I've done so far. And you have to do all the feet properly to get the eyes, ears, the lips split, to get all the cartilage out of the nose to get it fleshed properly, washed, boarded. Yeah, it took me a full two days. It was quite the job. So right now it's uh, on the forming board. It's flipped so it's fur out. We just have to let it dry for a few more days. We put her on the scale and she weighed 92 pounds, so a decent female. And then after she was on the forming board, measuring from the tip of her nose to the base of her tail, not the tip of her tail, but the base of her tail, uh, was 62 inches. I'm not too sure where my bird friends are at. Usually when I come out with food, they're right here. When I got back out here, there was no fresh wolf sign, but last night we had wolves howling, so I'm excited to go check traps. Lynx cubby, still standing. I was out for a day trip with my dad last week and we actually pulled a few of our lynx cubbies, four of them. We're getting kind of close to our quota limit. Wolf snare right there, still standing. No fresh wolf sign yet. snare right there down on the river under that fallen tree okay well no fresh wolf sign yet I don't think they came through here last night so we'll go head out to the bait loop and go check that out We've had a fisher come by the cabin, looks like a few times recently, it's got a few different sets of tracks, and it actually stole one of the squirrels off of my squirrel pole sets that are at the cabin there. Came into the cabin to find that there was just a head of a squirrel hanging there, the body was gone, and there was fisher tracks all around. So what I've done here is we got a martin box that's not far from the cabin, so I decided to set it up here. Well I finished up the bait loop, and all the traps were empty. Unfortunately, I got one brand new trail right here that the coyotes have been running. So, uh, wasn't here a couple days ago when I last checked. So I put a snare up there. There's fresh coyote tracks out on the skidoo trail here. So they've been here recently. Bait pile still looks good. I think in a couple more days I'll put more bait out. But I mean, they're still coming in. They're definitely hitting the bait. They just aren't running the same trails. I don't know if these dogs are just really smart or if we got the worst luck ever, but <laughs> uh, snares are empty, so hopefully this one here will produce and maybe they'll start running some existing trails and we can get some fur rolling off this bait pile. The wolves should be back any day now, maybe even tonight. So once we see that fresh wolf sign, it's going to be an exciting check for sure. I'm starting to run out of daylight here. Got a little ways left to go. I think I'm going to set up another squirrel pole. But other than that, I'm calling it a wrap, so... Just want to say thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, showing your support for the channel. I'll be back as soon as I can with another video. Hope to see you there. And until then, as always, God bless and stay wild.